Gone are the days of Bobby Knight as Indiana's general, but interim head coach Mike Davis has the Hoosiers playing well. Junior Kirk Haston ignites this young team that seems to be hitting its stride just as crucial Big Ten Conference play begins and March Madness approaches. Steve Alford is forever linked to Indiana as captain of the 1987 championship team. Now, Coach Alford and IU star transfer Luke Recker are both in search of their first win versus Big Red in this conference showdown, which is next on CBS. We welcome you to Carver Hawkeye Arena on the campus of the University of Iowa on this midwinter Saturday afternoon. Big Ten basketball, Indiana comes to town to take on the Hawkeyes. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Billy Packer. We welcome you here. Game has a lot of meaning for a lot of folks, Bill, but perhaps not more so for anybody than the Iowa head coach and star player. Well, it's kind of interesting to see them in Iowa uniform. Steve Offer, the leading scorer in the history of Indiana, Mr. Basketball Indiana, as was Luke Recker who is the leading scorer now for Iowa. So it is very strange, uncomfortable, but two outstanding performers. Well, Bob Knight fired last fall as the head coach at Indiana. Mike Davis has taken his spot, but they have yet to remove that interim label from him. Very difficult to replace a legend. I don't know if you ever do, particularly one like Bob Knight. Mike might have hurt his own cause a little bit after that loss to Kentucky, where he questioned maybe his own position with the university. A very tough job ahead for Mike. This is a very poignant weekend for all of us in television and in the basketball community. The loss of a dear colleague and friend, Al McGuire, who passed away at the age of 72, Bill. One of the all-time great ones. We see some of his methods and madness of the past, but uh, he will be sorely missed, not only by basketball people, but anybody who ever touched him. Dick Enberg and Billy Packer will share some reminiscences of Al when we get to halftime. We'll return to Iowa City in just a moment. Mike Davis is 12 and 8 for the Indiana Hoosiers as they come in to take on Iowa in his first year as the head coach. And they will start a large front court. Jared Jeffries, Kirk Haston, and Jeffrey Newton at 6'9, 6'9, and 6'10. And in the backcourt, Tom Coverdale and Dane Fife. Steve Alford in his second season as the head coach in Iowa City. His team 15 and 4 and 4 and 2. And the starting five, Duez Henderson, Jared Reiner, Reggie Evans, Dean Oliver, and Luke Recker. Two-year starter at Indiana before sitting out as a transfer last year. First time he has faced his former teammates, Ted Hillary, Rick Hartzell, and Tom Clark, the officiating crew. And the tip. I thought it got Henderson's arm slightly. Boy, a good call by the official right at the top of the game here. That was a tough one to see without a replay. Tom Coverdale, the sophomore guard, has it picked up by Dean Oliver. Now here's Jeffrey Newton and Jared Reiner out on him. Straight man to man, Evans and Haston. That's going to be some matchup, Vern. Two of the most proficient guys in the Big Ten in the nation, for that matter. Kirk Haston averaging a double-double in Big Ten play gets the first basket. And notice something right off the bat. They are not guarding each other on the other end of the floor. So hey, Evans has Haston down one way, but Haston not guarding him on the other. Take away by Tom Coverdale. Here comes Indiana with a 2 nothing lead. They kick it left, but Jared Jeffries had gotten farther in. Let's take a look at the Big Ten standings as we begin play today. Illinois with a troubled win over Michigan the other night, Michigan State, then Iowa, Purdue, Minnesota, and Indiana. You had seven teams on that list right there, Vern. You can't imagine they're going to get seven in the NCAA tournament. That left off Ohio State as well. Great steal by Fife. Dane Fife, Luke Rucker's former teammate. Nice feed off the glass and in. Boy, if you're Steve Alford, you do not like the way your team has come out here. When you're playing at home, there's got to be more intensity at the start of the ball game than what they've shown so far. Coverdale on Oliver. 
Hazelwood. Back it goes to Reggie Evans, the junior college transfer. Not a good shot. Nope. Hastings clears it for Indiana. They have a 4 0 lead. Nobody else can pull up here. He has had trouble shooting the three in Big Ten play. You know, I thought he was a little hesitant there. The shot was wide open for him. He took his time. And there's a hard foul by Coverdale. And knocks Dean Oliver down. Coverdale yep. now 4 of 20 from three-point range. Yeah, you know, and a lot of that uh, has nothing to do with technique. He was a great scorer in high school, Mr. Basketball in Indiana. He has to realize that shot was there and be ready to take it. He seemed like he almost didn't want to take the shot, and, of course, that takes away your confidence. Here's Duez Henderson. Luke Recker over his former teammate and roommate, Dane Fife. This fires. A little post up right there. Now, Fife is bigger than you think. Probably just gives up an inch on Recker, which is unusual for most guards that would play him. But Recker's knee is really giving him problems. He's not even 50% on that leg. Jeffries, top of the key. Hastings gets the rebound. Little soft jumper. And it's out of bounds. It will be Indiana ball. Newton got away with a push. Knock Reiner right underneath the basket. Again, I, if I'm Indiana, I'm going to find out what Evans can do on Hastings. We know he's a tireless rebounder, but can he guard a guy that's got as much of a repertoire as Hastings does? There's his own defense. Coverdale misses again. Offensive board for Jeffries puts it in. 6-0 Indiana. Did you know that Hastings played behind Evans on that rebound and went right over the top of him? Not being all of it. Try to post up Reggie Evans. Reiner looks inside. The freshman from South Dakota. The record in traffic really has a difficult time because he's trying to protect that knee and he's stretching that knee out right now. And he knows it's a long way from being healthy. He is really sore right now. Luke Recker bruised the knee when he went knee on knee with an opponent in the Missouri game. And uh, we chatted with him briefly before the game. He said it's just not going to get better this yeah, year. He told me yesterday, he said, and he did not practice yesterday. And he said, I'm going to play this game if I only have one leg. But you know, he may have to have that leg just rested a couple of games because he's a far cry from the player that he really can be. He's liking to move without the ball. That gets you in a lot of traffic. Off the back rim, into the hands of Hastings. Iowa still looking for its first basket. Wrecker is 0 for 2. Now Jeffrey Newton back outside to Coverdale. Indiana, since Big Ten play began in early January, win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. They have been on the seesaw. Well, and they both don't want to see Michigan anymore. Huh? Right. Here's Wrecker. There's Evans at the other end. Jeffries. Pretty good play. Good hard nose put up there by Evans. And a good head, hit ahead by Iowa. Here we see this, the strip and then the hit ahead. And Evans fearless going to that rim. Jeffries tries to go up with him. Good two-handed attempt there by Evans. Uh, made it difficult to block. But here is, here is where Evans is having all kinds of problems. Not a good free throw shooter. And this is tough for Iowa because he has been to the line over 200 times already this year. See where he has to sell the rebounding number two in the country. Young man from Pensacola, Florida. Last two years at Coffeeville, Kansas Community College. Oklahoma in the chase for him along with Maryland and Cincinnati. But uh, Rich Walker, the assistant, Saw him play at Coffeeville and got an early line on him, and uh, he's now at the University of Iowa. Nice protection by Dean Oliver, but underneath, wide open, Jeffrey Newton. Coverdale with a fine pass. Well, that was a situation where Iowa tried to pick up full court. Evans never did get back in defensive position. That's what left Newton wide open inside. Seven-point Indiana lead. Here's Jared Reiner, the freshman. No place to go. He walked. Yep. Boy, I'm watching Wrecker out here, Vern, a lot. And with this motion offense that uh, Steve Alford runs, it's going to require Wrecker to be in a lot of traffic. You know, you're in there, you're coming off of screens, and that's when you're getting banged constantly. And when that knee is already so sore, that really makes it tough for him. 16-12 to go first half. Hastings, top of the key. Now nah, wide open is covered in. And that's what makes Hastings so tough because when he steps out, you've got to go play him. Did not make a three-point shot in his first two years in college. 
but uh, he does have a threat uh, as the Michigan State can tell you another bad pass Reiner having all kinds of problems with his ball handling they still can't buy a basket and over the top Dewez Henderson things are really going Indiana's way on the road in search of their second consecutive win they have jumped out to a nine point lead and when you talk about the Iowa Hawkeyes, they have got to improve their shooting beyond the arc. How about today? They have got to shoot, improve their shooting everywhere. But I think really the key is a guy like Luke Recker. He's averaging over 33 minutes a game, Vern, 17.6 points per game. But you can see right now that when you have your lead scorer like this that's playing way under his ability based on that knee injury, you're in some serious trouble. Steve Upper is going to have to go ahead and find out where he's going to get scoring. And that's going to have to come off the bench, where primarily he's coming off the bench with freshmen. Well, he has gone uh, to the bench and got two freshmen in now. Sean Sonderleiter replaces Reiner and Worley. Glenn Worley, a freshman from here in Iowa City. Number four is also on the floor. Mike Davis has stayed with his starting five. Here's Dane Fife, and here's Kirk Haston. They double him. Nice double down by Recker. It brings a lot of size to that double. Beautiful baseline move, and then the shot short. But the offensive board again, and Newton has the basket. Ooh. Big call right there. Coverdale had Oliver by the arm, but the walk took place before the foul. Big turnover. I talked about turnovers by Indiana. Iowa finds themselves this year with minus 20, 24 turnovers to assist. And that'll really cause you trouble. Hasten, there's the block from Reggie Evans. Nice patience by Haston. Showed no uh, concern whatsoever on that play. And another block. This one from Worley. So back-to-back -back blocks, but Iowa still searching for its first field goal. Wake Forest and Cincinnati early going. It's 12-1 here. And Georgetown, what a season for Craig Eschwitz Bunch. Big win at UNLV the other night. Good step in. Up the middle with the glass. Record gets his first basket. And here's the double team on the press. Good job by Jeffries to come back and get it. Pass, alley oop. Haston. And there's the block from Worley. Wow. They'll take it back again. So Haston has had the ball the last four times, and he has seen rejection on all four, but he ends up on the line. And you can see how Indiana wants to play right over the top of Iowa. There's one, and finally a foul, and Haston is happy to see something productive take place. Haston gets the first of two. And here comes Courtney Scott, number 52 on the floor. Replacing Sonderleiter. Kirk Haston, the junior. Red shirt junior, so senior academically. Had the big winning shot against Michigan State to stop that uh, Spartan streak. Now, Billy alluded to they don't want to see Michigan right after that big victory over Michigan State. Indiana defeated by Michigan, and last Saturday night here, Iowa played perhaps its worst game of the season in losing at home to Michigan. Yeah, you know, Iowa is not playing well here today and having that loss to Michigan, which you really come back to haunt them when you're trying to go for a championship. Iowa has won three games on the road in the Big Ten. Nobody else has won more than one. As a matter of fact, there have only been eight road wins all year in the Big Ten, with Iowa, as I said, holding three of those. And Northwestern counts. That's right. Evans throws it out of bounds. Evans right now, Vern, to my knowledge, does Evan have a rebound yet? No. That's very unusual. He's had three games this year where he's had 18 rebounds. We're talking about a guy that can go up and get it. Right now, I think he's pay paying a lot of attention to Haston and maybe taking him off the boards, particularly on the defensive end. And we are 6-15 into this game. Newton back to Coverdale. Dane Fife has had a bad shooting year, so he passes on the shot. Penetration, that's a way to solve it. It really is. Uh, Iowa playing very, very poor basketball right now. No intensity. And we not only see Steve Alford upset, how about the way his dad looked at him?
Steve's dad, Sam, and assistant coach at Iowa. They're down by 13. Indiana up 16 to 3 with 13.30 remaining. Ryan Hogan, another transfer, has replaced Luke Recker, his current roommate here at the University of Iowa. Hogan, who played two years at Kentucky, wears number two and is on the floor now. You see these transfers a little bit of everywhere, don't you? Yeah. Kentucky with Bradley playing so well up at Villanova. Hogan first sub in for the backcourt for uh, Iowa. And he's going to need to hit some outside shots to loosen up this Indiana defense right now. If I was going to get back in it. Oliver can't get it. Ball tipped by Scott underneath. Way underneath. underneath Reggie Evans. A lot of size out there that you mentioned at the top of the show, Vern, for Indiana. Tall, long-armed. Here's his own defense now by Iowa. They have pretty good move right here in the way Fife and Coverdale have not been shooting well from the outside. Make somebody else do it. Haston misses from three, and here comes Worley on the break. Dishes right side, Reggie Evans. Boy, they... What they're having a problem with, and you can see why they have a lot of turnovers, the wrong guy with the ball at the wrong time, throwing it to a guy you don't want to have to catch it out on the open floor. They want to get that ball to Oliver when they have a chance for a break. He's got the best assist turnover ratio in the Big Ten. If you notice on that break, he wasn't even involved. No, it was Worley and Evans. There's Scott, rejected by Jeffrey Newton. And Indiana comes back down across the timeline with a 13-point lead. Jared Jeffries. Uh, they're, they're content to shoot the ball over the top of the zone. Steve Alford has to like that, and if you're Indiana, say, let's get back inside with a game. He did move by Alford to go to the zone. Worley misses this time. Iowa one for nine from the field. Fife. Oh, well, it's going well now. Absolutely. You're talking about Fife who's been struggling all year long. He was 11 for 40 from three coming into this game. Just 27%. Look confident on that one. And a 16-point deficit staring Iowa in the face at home. Scott, again, bad ball handling. Fundamental ball handling really showing off here. With a lack of fundamental ball handling. Scott with the entry pass. Reggie again. Evans again. Ends the drought. Mike Davis liked, though, the defensive work that time by his ball club. This crowd trying to do anything to get their team back in. It is a rabid crowd of 15,500. I think Indiana should look to try to get the ball inside against this zone side. Let Haston touch it. Here's Newton. There it is, inside. Evans with his first rebound. Travel. Wow. It's the second time today that Coverdale has forced a turnover in the backcourt. 11.01 to go, first half. 13, Indiana lead. Back at Carver Hawkeye in Iowa City, 19-6, Indiana. Luke Recker's former team. He was a two-year starter at Indiana as a freshman and a sophomore. Third team all Big Ten in his sophomore year. Opted to transfer and uh, declared himself for Arizona, but then was involved in a uh, tragic, fatal accident in Durango, Colorado, during which time one man was killed. His former girlfriend paralyzed, her brother injured. Luke Recker himself almost lost an ear. And uh, deciding to come back to Iowa, his dad, Claire, lives within 30 miles of uh, Iowa City. And he has declared himself a Hawkeye. He's a terrific player, but obviously Billy really very handicapped by that knee right now. He really is. And uh, you look at Steve Alford over on the sidelines there, and what a prolific shooter he was. He almost has to be tempted to put on the sneakers and go out in the second half and play himself. One of the great pure shooters that's ever played in college basketball. From the corner, off the rim, no good. Still alive. That's Kyle Hornsby who came in during the break from the 32. Hogan. Oh. Hornsby had his hand right in Hogan's face. Big jump shot there. Alford is gone with Hogan and Recker in the back court. And there's the stuff shot from Jeffrey Newton. Nice job by Fife to go inside against that zone. 
It looks like it's compact, but there are opportunities to get it in there. Hornsby with a good steal. Yep. Jeffries. Travel. Yes. Very nice move. He's such a fluid freshman. For behind the scenes access to Super Bowl 35, including analysis from Phil Sims and Bill Walsh, go to SuperBowl.com, powered by CBS Sportsline.com. Reiner's back on the floor as well. Here's Hogan. Tried to use the left hand. Nothing there. On the floor, Reiner taken down like a tree being felled. And a hell ball possession arrow <laughs> goes to Iowa. <laughs> well, let me tell you something about Reiner. He's six foot eleven, but he's a brown belt in, in taekwondo. So he's not afraid to go down there and go some scrapping. Well, he also played defensive end for his high school football team. They won two state titles. He's from Trip, South Dakota. Not the largest community you've ever seen. A thousand folks. Well, how many guys from South Dakota do you know ever came and played uh, major college basketball? You no, know, he was Mr. Basketball in South Dakota. It doesn't have quite the panache that Mr. Basketball in Indiana or Kentucky has. No, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> or Michigan. <laughs> or Illinois. Coverdale back in. Fife picked up his second foul and he gets a rest. Well, Coverdale, I'll tell you, puts a hammer on guys with that forearm of his. Here's Reiner. Jared Reiner, 6'11. Hogan. Goes to shoot two. There was a case where Jeffries is a little bit too aggressive. He had the advantage. Hogan's playing a very aggressive basketball game here on the offensive end. But watch out, Jeffries has the advantage. Or Newton rather has the advantage and instead of just staying with it and getting a little piece of the ball he came down a little bit too hard. Second foul on Newton Ryan Hogan raised in the suburb of the suburb of Chicago Deerfield recruited by Rick Pitino and played two years at Kentucky started two games his sophomore year he wears a ring from the 98 championship team but when Tubby Smith came in he thought eh, eh. Just uh, wasn't comfortable, so he de decided to transfer. Well, he was almost a 90% free throw shooter at Kentucky. So not surprising he drills those two. Within 10, and that arouses the crowd. That 2-3 zone really packing in deeper and deeper. I'm sure the scouting report showed Indiana may not have the outside shooting of the pass, but a good job by Haston coming outside. Eric Haston, the 6'10 uh, junior from Tennessee. See, record just not quick enough on that leg to even go out and get the ball. Jumper from record comes down on one leg. Yep. Sure did. Moy with the rebound. Nice move to go inside against this zone. The tip won't go. Loose ball. Haston battles for it. Hits it last out of bounds. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over 30 years. Evans back into the ball game now. Let's see if he can get up on the glass. It's really been kept off the both offensive and defensive boards so far. Jeffrey's on him. Two rebounds so far, Billy, for Reggie Evans, who averages a little more than 12. Boy, he was wide open. Oliver didn't get him the ball. And there's Wrecker again. You notice he's coming down on one leg completely. And you cannot shoot jump shots when you know you can't bounce back down on two legs. Luke Wrecker, one for five. That's not surprising. As a matter of fact, as bad as he's hurting right now, even though he wants to play, it may be in their best interest to, to just to rest him. Because he's going to take the shots and he's going to aggressively try to get the ball. But he is just a shell of himself on the court right now. Gosh, you can see him favor that knee as he uh, tries to react defensively. He's on A.J. Moore. Back to man to man now. Nice pass, Coverdale. Good skip passing by Indiana. Hornsby got it. Nice offensive set that time by Indiana. Skip passing and Hornsby has another steal by Hornsby. He's coming in and really doing a good job. Now it's Iowa that normally gets great play off their bench, but so far today they've been positive play on the Indiana bench. They've got Coverdale out with the ball now, guarded by Dean Oliver. Three seconds. I mean a five-second call there. Five seconds,
Five second violation, turnover, 7.57 to go. First half. Just under eight remaining in the first half, and any way you want to slice this pie, Indiana gets the larger pieces. Well, it's amazing, Vern. It's a, it's a wonder the score is not uh, higher in the favor of Indiana right now. I mean, they're dominating the rebounding situation. They're almost doubling the shooting percentage right out there. We see Wrecker with the problems he's having with that knee. Indiana totally in control of this basketball game, and uh, I think Iowa would be, uh, it'd be amazing to me if they could start whittling this lead down because Indiana looks like far the superior team today. An Iowa team that has lost at home just once. That was a week ago. They went on the road and won at Minnesota. And Indiana, as we said, comes in with a 3-3 three and three Big Ten record, but looking for their first back-to-back -back victories of uh, the Big Ten season. Evans, who has not been a factor in this game. That's a travel. Trying to do too much. A good job by Indiana. Not trying to go for the block, just crowding him. Tonight on CBS, don't miss some of the most talked about moments on television. Back to back for the first time. Super Bowl's greatest commercials tonight on CBS, home of Super Bowl 35. You know, they only played one time last year, Indiana winning over in Bloomington. Those unusual matchups because of the not everybody plays everybody in the Big Ten, so they just went one time. They've had five common opponents this year. And uh, I will actually get in the better of the two, but not today. Indiana won that game last year, 74-71. Here is Moy from outside. Nope. That was the second, second thought on his part. He went up in the air looking to pass the ball and then took the shot when he got at the peak of his jump. Now, Ted Hillary overruled Rick Hartzell, and then Tom Clark came over to make it a two or three vote in favor of Iowa. And, and Mike Davis saying good job to the referees, uh, you know, because he realized let's get it right. Nice piece of officiating there. A head oh, move, Oliver beats. Beautiful crossover dribble by Oliver, and he beat the hedge move. It was just too much space by the defensive twosome there. Lead is 13. Iowa actually got it down to 10 at one point, but answers like this from Jared Jeffries have uh, kept Indiana well in front. Oliver, Wrecker, Evans, Hogan, and Duez Henderson. There's Oliver short with a couple. Nice job of crashing the board by Jeffries. And a good job by blocking out Evans. He's been taken right out of this game. And if you're Iowa, you better get him in this game with only six minutes to go in the first half. Turn around. You know, Jeffries. He's using Henderson just as a peep site there. 17 point lead, 30 to 13. Now Steve Alford got some energy from the freshman Glenn Worley, so he's going to bring him back in off the bench. Henderson doesn't want the shot from there. Move in the lane. No, nope, not there. And Coverdale gets it as Wrecker made a pass at it. How about Hornsby? He's getting every loose ball down inside. Good move by Coverdale, who had 30 against Notre Dame in his big output of the year. Didn't get a chance to play much at all last season. A hard-nosed kid. And Coverdale goes to the line. This Indiana team burned from the line, and they've gone to the line 400, almost five, well, more than 500 times now, counting this game but not doing well at all. Only shooting 62% as a team. Now, if you get to the line a lot, you want to have the kind of team that can be shooting up there with a, in the high 70s. It can mean the difference when you take a look at this team's record. I mean, if they're a 75% free throw shooting team, they've got a fine record. They did shoot well down the stretch and win over Purdue last week with 12 in the last 14. A point made. Yes. I mean, absolutely. You, I mean, when you go to the line as much as they do, and if you start making a high percentage, finally. Worley gets a quick basket from close range. Breakdown defensively by Jeffries on the play. And another of the five freshmen is on the floor now for Steve Alford. Brody Boyd, a young man from Duggar, Indiana. Number 11. Two very relatively young teams out here on the floor for considering the league as tough as the Big Ten. Coverdale misses. Jeffries goes up and grabs it. 
And there again, you see freshmen in the case of Worley had an opportunity to go ahead and just have a good double team and tried to reach in to steal the ball. All comes with a lack of experience. Yeah, Jeffries will inbound. Andre Owens is also on a 4 4 Indiana. Another of the uh, first year players. There's that 2 3 zone. Evans down in the middle. Good steal by Rick. Nice pass to Oliver. It's a three on three. Record. See if he can change this one. Yes. He did the wise thing that time, considering what position his leg in. Rather than fill the lane and go for the layup, Luke Record just shifted out to the side and there, without any pressure, had a wide open look and was able to shoot the shot without having to elevate very high. 4.48 to go first half, and now let's check in with Applebee's tournament favorites and go back to the 1987 NCAA championship. Takes the shot, and the Hoosiers with three seconds. Go ahead. Indiana wins the championship. Keith Smart is the hero. Indiana defeated Syracuse by one. Steve Alford set an NCAA championship record with seven three-pointers in that game. You know, Billy, you were talking about his ability as a shooter. He was trying to teach Brody Boyd some uh, lessons yesterday, got on the floor, took a three-pointer, canned it, I mean, immediately, and said, this is how I want it done. It's like learning how to ride a bicycle. You know, when you're that kind of a shooter, Steve Alford averaged uh, over 90 percentile, 92 percentile from the foul line one year at Indiana. You know, the thing that's amazing about him, he was the four times, four years he was there, he's the leading scorer. But three years that he was there, he was the leading steal man. That I never would have remembered. No. They're going to call this one on Worley. Well, the Super Bowl returns to CBS tomorrow. Here's the lineup beginning at 12 noon Eastern. MTV's TRL, then Phil Simms' 2000 All-Iron Team, and the Extreme Super Bowl presented by Game Day. Right up to kickoff, and then the Super Bowl 35, the Ravens against the New York Giants. Very, people probably don't realize this, but Steve Alford at Indiana only played one year where the three-point shot was in. So, you know, he holds the record of a, of a season three-point shooting at Indiana. He shot 53% from three. That particular year, 107 to 202. Jared Odell gets another offensive board for Indiana. Walk, walk. So the positive countered by the negative. I'll tell you, this is a very well officiated game so far. You know, there's a flow to this game, and even though I was shooting very poorly, it's not that they're not letting them play. Now look at the rebounding edge, and Iowa comes in in Big Ten play. They are plus 12 per game in rebounding, and they're getting decimated on the boards today. Oh, push off by Oliver, got away with it. Boyd for three. Well, he's what the third leading scorer in the history of Indiana high school basketball. Two times led the state in scoring, so he ought to be able to fill it up. Crowd just going crazy here. Great support. Covered in. No, it's Hornsby. No. Rebound Evans. Iowa ball. noise and the home team still trails by 12. Effective. See the contrast effectiveness. Two points shooting three of 13 and from downtown four of seven. An 8-1 Iowa run and they've carved uh, into this 19 point deficit. They're down by 12. Got to give this crowd a lot of credit don't you Vern? Yes staying right with their ball club. I was here the first day this gym was ever open. Michigan State Iowa. 1983. That's right. First uh, first game ever played here, and Judd Heathcote had an upset victory on the road. Coming up on the half, Jim Nance will have all the scores and highlights and a special tribute to our late colleague Al McGuire, Dick Enberg, and Billy Packer, who formed one of the outstanding broadcasting threesomes ever. We'll look back at the life and good times of uh, the legendary Al. That's all coming up at the half. Luke, an 88% free throw shooter, normally would hit that one. Kind of a big shot.
shot right there because could have got this lead surprisingly in a position where they could have gone in at single digits. A.J. Moore got it. Rector's on the floor. Got to give Rector a lot of credit. He's shown a lot of guts out here today, but really is handicapped. There again in traffic. And, and what happened? And Rector actually out Moy. He grabbed him by the arm, and then Moy gets called for the foul. Watch Wrecker coming off. See, he has Moy pinned there, and Moy gets the foul. <laughs> little veteran move on the freshman. Moy complaining to Mike Davis, saying, hey, he's holding me. The striped shirts are going in the other direction. <laughs> Hogan has come back replacing Boyd for Iowa, and Wrecker is at the line. Shoots one more. He had 12 20 point games at Indiana. You know, he, really a fine score. Matter of fact, uh, Jared Jeffries, in the history of Indiana basketball, have only been 14 freshmen. We've averaged in double figures. Three of them are in the building here. There's Moy up, no good. Moy's an excellent leaper, 40 inch vertical. And here's Wrecker, who is one of the, the 14. And the other, Jared Jeffries, who is playing for Indiana, averaging in double figures, and Steve Alford as well. Now Hogan. Wrecker, catch and shoot. Got a terrific job getting the screen. And can you believe this score? Down by nine. Three pointer, no good. Big possession right here. Oliver's got to take his time. He dishes nope. right side, right to Jeffries. No, nope. not a good decision on his part. Steve Offered very upset with him. That was the time to come down and get the good shot. A lapse by the senior, the only senior on the floor. There's Jeffries, also is Thompson, and Thompson is called for the foul. Tonight on CBS, catch a live performance by pop music's most electrifying entertainer. It's Ricky Martin's Super Bowl Saturday night, tonight on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 35. Jeffries, beautiful oh, drive. Yes, it was. Listed at 6'10", plays even bigger, and he can put the ball on the floor. Nice, soft touch. Outstanding player. Beat out Zach Randolph for Mr. Basketball in Indiana. We've seen him play a number of times, so that's quite an accomplishment. There's Wrecker. Little pick and roll. Evans, nope, not the shot you want. When you figure two of the last three possessions by Iowa really hurt them. I mean, they had an opportunity to get this thing down there to single digits. Made some bad decisions. Oliver on Coverdale. Boy decides not to take that three-pointer and record backs off. Hornsby, nice jumper. Yes, beautiful change off the pass by Hornsby. It's back to a 13-point lead. Well, you make those kind of mental mistakes in your Iowa playing as poorly as they have in the first half, and it really can hurt you. He just can't move without a dribble. He really can't. He would have been able to, with that fake, he'd have been able to put the ball on the floor and go all the way to the basket or maybe pull up for a 12-footer, but he just can't go more than one or two dribbles. Andre Owens back on the floor now. His record limps down to a defensive position. It's Coverdale, Hornsby, Owens, Jeffries, and Kirk Haston for Indiana. Boy, with 38 seconds to go, you'd have thought that maybe they bring Fife back into the ball game, have a little leadership out there on the floor. Really going with rookies. Haston, wow! Oh, oh, oh. oh! That's that red shirt year as a freshman where he worked on things that weren't in his repertoire. And now he's got the long jump shot, the half hook, the full hook. That was the old George Mikan drill shot. Another hold. Whistle away from the ball. I think they got Andre Owens. Wrecker still trying to move well without that ball. 
despite the leg problems. And this is two fouls he's picked up on Indiana. Moving for the ball and being held. Uh -oh. That's rare. 90% free throw shooter missing two in the first half. Owens, 20 on 20, with Oliver guarding him. Here's Hastings. That foul, and he still made the shot. My goodness. Two big shots. One the turnaround jumper and one the beautiful hook. One of the Big Ten's premier players. Indiana ends the half with an 8-0 run after Iowa had cut the lead to 9, but all of a sudden, it's 17. That's the end of the half with a score 43-26. We'll return with Jim Nance in Tampa, Billy and Dick Enberg. Reminiscences of Al McGuire after this word. Offensive rebounds 11 to 2 and points in the paint 14 to 4. Well, Reggie Evans, who's had a monstrous season so far, 0 for 3 from the floor, only three rebounds, four turnovers. This from a man who is averaging 16 points and 12 rebounds per game. Here's Iowa with the ball. Record behind the back dribble. Nice move. Ryder actually screened off basically four Indiana players to make that open lane. Fife had no help. Full court pressure. There's the trap. Evans. Now Jeffries gets right by him and finds Haston underneath for two. Nice hesitation by Haston. Why would no one pick up a six foot ten man dribbling the ball the length of the floor? I mean, go attack him. Make him make a play. Not at the last minute, but when he's 60 feet from the basket. Kirk Haston with 12 for Indiana underneath. Evans, foul will go to the line. A lot of space there given to give Evans that opportunity. This season, Indiana against opponents ranked at the time they played. For example, Notre Dame, then number 10. Charlotte was then 24. And the big win of the season was the victory over Michigan State. They lost to Tennessee and lost to Wisconsin. Both of these teams have lost to Wisconsin. That incredible defense. Oh, the one thing Evans has had trouble with all year long has been free throw shooting, and that's two out of three for him. Go! 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 Watch out, Jason! Watch out! Nice rotation. And let's see if they stay in the press. 2-2-1. Two, two, one. Another 1-3 one, set up and they're going three-quarter court. A little different than the last press they put on, which was full court. And they drop back into the zone of the man-to-man. -man. Let's see. Wrecker wasn't sure. The 2-3 zone. Now Fife looks underneath the Newton. Sends for Hastings for three. Air ball. Henderson gets it. Oliver wants to hurry the pace. Dean Oliver, the only senior on the floor. You have a working margin like this in your Indiana. You don't want to take those shots. Make Iowa's defense have to work. Wrecker for three. Second time today. Wrecker once on a fast break, and that time on the half court faded to the side. Oliver was able to find him. 15 points for the junior from Auburn, Indiana. Here's Haston. He'll pass on the shot. Liner comes out. is 12. Jeffries, that's for three. Nope. You notice how Jeffries was floating before he took that shot instead of squaring up to the basket. Tipped out to Wrecker. Almost loses control. Or he just doesn't have that one leg to explode off on and drive to the basket. You really ought to crowd him if you're guarding him. The team he used to star for. You watch this. Fife, his old roommate, put him right on the floor and he still buried it. They haven't stopped cheering. And here's that press again, Vern, picking up three quarter court. Dean Oliver has it, kicks it right. 
Henderson keeps the dribble alive. Reiner finds Evans. Nice, strong move. He rolled that one in. We're seeing a team that's not playing pretty, but they're playing hard. A 10-0 run. Hornsby silences the crowd. Really solid play by Hornsby off the bench today. Indiana jumped out to a 19-3 lead. There's a foul. On Fife, that's number three. Tomorrow, right after the Super Bowl. 16 new castaways try to outwit, outplay, and outlast each other. The premiere of the most anticipated show of the season, Survivor, the Australian Outback, tomorrow after the Super Bowl. Oliver, back outside to Evans, puts it on the floor, dishes to Reiner, who was not quite ready for it, but a foul was called. Evans really slashed to the basket nicely. He has not shown us he's a very good ball handler, but that was a pretty good dunk. Four fouls on Fife. That really hurts Indiana. You've got a guy out there with a lot of experience and a good defender, and now you have to come back in with a freshman. Dane Fife got called for the foul, didn't hesitate, headed right for the bench. Here's A.J. Moy, a 6'3 freshman out of Atlanta. Wrecker will inbound. Mike Davis trying to get the officials to look at him and say, hey, I've got a guy sitting here over the bench with four fouls on him, and nobody's getting called for any fouls from Iowa. And you see Wrecker running and running and running, trying to get free without the ball. Oliver back outside to Evans. He's probably not going to take that jumper. Duez Henderson. And a foul inside. Basket counts. It'll be on Evans. Slashing for the offensive rebound. Evans trying to go ahead and encourage the crowd. Oliver grabs him and says, hey, get where you belong, which is down there being the point man on the zone, full court press. The basket does count. The foul is on Evans. The trap, they get it to Coverdale. Again, nobody picking up the dribbler, allowing Indiana to have a good opportunity to get a good shot off. Hornsby long with a shot into the hands of Wrecker. Been on fire. Still is. Imagine this. They're allowing a guy who can't run to have open shots. You've got to force Wrecker to put the ball on the floor and dribble. A real breakdown defensively by Indiana. against Iowa State this year had the game winner with 26 against Drake but he didn't do those on one leg today he is lighting it up on one leg and if you're Indiana you have got to go ahead and get tight with him force him to dribble the ball and put it on the floor and drive because he is hitting that standstill one-handed nine of 12 from three-point range and unblemished in this half Iowa has hit all six of its field goal attempts Here's Jeffries penetrating. Offensive? No. Well, I'm going to give Mike Davis some credit unless they do call it an offensive foul. Now they do. He's been working these officials and not getting any calls. And he's getting very frustrated on that sideline. Worley will come on for Jared Reiner, the 6'11 freshman. Four team fouls on Indiana, only one for Iowa. Now, just to recap, this is as close as Iowa has been since it was 7-3 to three Indiana. And Indiana went back to the big lineup, bringing Newton back out on the floor. Duez Henderson, number 23, guarded by Newton. Penetrates off the glass. No. Rebound, Evans. Kicked out. Oliver saves it. Newton with an incredible block there. Now, Wrecker is guarded by Hornsby. Hornsby should get right in his face and make him dribble. See, he's allowing him to shoot the jump shot. Wrecker's got nowhere where he can go if he has to put it on that second dribble. Jeffries with the entry pass. Little turnaround. Henderson clears Hayton's miss. Hayton's miss. Oliver, jumper. No. Tip. Yes. Beautiful. 
perfectly timed. Henderson rebounds on both ends of the floor. This is an amazing comeback when you find an Iowa team playing so poorly. Find themselves in a position now with one more possession to tie this thing up. Coverdale from the corner. Here comes Iowa with a chance to tie or take the lead. That's three straight rebounds by Henderson. Worley, the freshman, muscles his way. Blocked by Haston. Haston off and running. Can Cobert and Coverdale find him? Back it goes to Newton. Spin move. Nice adjustment. He'll shoot free throws. Jeffries, Newton, and Haston all have that ability with a little jump shot outside to put the ball on the floor and make a dish. Second foul on record. Here's the uh, Iowa record against ranked opponents. One of their big victories against Illinois. They also knocked off Iowa State. Losses to Tennessee and at Wisconsin. Illinois, the opener of the Big Ten season for them. The Illinois-Michigan State matchup is going to be something. They only play one time this year in the regular season. Of course, this conference will have the postseason tournament in Chicago. And you'd have to expect, Vern, I know it's an awful early, you're not into February yet, but this league is probably going to go in a minimum six deep. So that tournament will really have some quality teams in it. One of two at the line for Newton. Ryan Hogan back on for Steve Arford, wearing number two and guarded by Newton. Hogan had a very good first half. Got the only shining light for Iowa at that point. Now Worley looks inside for Evans, finds him. Double down, up and under. He is so strong. The junior college product that has taken this Big Ten by storm. Imagine this. They have a chance to tie. They got a chance to tie with a free throw shooter that on the year has had all kinds of problems shooting only 58%, but today he's been able to drain them. Got pretty good rotation on the shot. Nope. That one backed away from it. First time today. Indiana by one. And here's where it really hurts Indiana to have Fife on that bench with the four fouls. Hornsby and Fife there. They've been the two steadying influences in the backcourt. There's the freshman Andre Owens to Coverdale, the sophomore. Double down. Good job by Wrecker. Guarding Haston. Helping out Worley up and under. Too strong. Kept alive. Worley with the rebound. Worley, Henderson, and Evans have really been controlling the boards. And a chance for the lead for the first time in the game. I don't know about that shot. No, nope, no, nope, that's not what Steve Offord wanted at all. Wrecker's such a competitor, though. He's wanting to take it all. What Steve Offord wanted in that possession to get the ball down inside to Evans. Spread him out, get it down low. There's the double, the help coming from Hogan. Haston left open off the front rim. And another chance for Iowa. When's the last time you remember Indiana getting an offensive rebound? I mean, it's been one and done this entire half. Oliver, no. Rebound. And Worley puts it on the floor. Iowa leads. This is some comeback. Ugly basketball for a long time. And I'm going to give this crowd a lot of respect. And their team was playing terrible basketball, and they stuck with them. Now Indiana trying to do crazy things. And again, here's where fight really hurts, being on that bench. Indiana was up by 17 at the half. They trailed by one, and we've yet to complete eight minutes in this half. Worley.
You know, he's a rookie coach as a, in a head position. He's got to realize now that he's on the road. Maybe he didn't get the calls that he thinks, but he's got to focus back in on his squad right now. His squad is totally lost. It's a 24-4 run. You've got to figure out that the guys in the striped shirts are not the whole answer. Rebounds have something to do with it. 14 Absolutely. to 4. Yep. Ball handling. Spacing things out. Getting the ball in the hands of the right guy to shoot. Hastings not on the floor right now. So where are the points going to come from? Hornsby tries to give him three and he does. Hornsby has really been solid today. Off the bench, Hornsby and Hogan have helped both their clubs. Kyle Hornsby with 11 points. And the score tied at 52. He had 14 at Minnesota, so not unusual for him to give that kind of production. Evans blocked possession arrow, Indiana. What Steve Alford wanted right there, he wanted that he was being shoved out underneath the basket. Mike Davis is 15 feet out on the floor, still pleading. Mr. Taekwondo Brown Belt. Watch how he's going to seal off the entire Indiana team on this play as Wrecker reverses himself. Reiner goes down inside. He sets one screen, two screens, three screens, four screens. Wrecker goes in for the layup. Hey, he screened the entire population of Trip South Dakota. He really did. He had it. <laughs> and Wrecker recognized it. And here gives Steve Alford a lot of credit. The pickup full court and three quarter court has taken Indiana out of their offense. Put it in the hand of Jared Jeffries, and he finds uh, Andre Owens. It's interesting. Jeffries has been the key man in trying to break the press on almost all occasions. He's a good ball handler, but very inexperienced. Hastings still on the bench for Indiana. That basket goes. And I don't know why in this particular situation. I mean, they can't afford to rest him much longer. Jeffries has 12 after that basket. And Indiana back up by two. Giving Rector a rest out here right now, trying to figure to stay in the lead. Keep him as healthy as possible down the wire. Evans, a non-factor in the first half, has been a presence in this half. That one tipped. Uh, Evans doesn't recognize that he's being doubled down, and Newton is so tall coming from behind. And here's Newton at the other end, in and out. Worley. A lot of energy from Glenn Worley. Worley and Henderson really helping Evans out on the boards. Steve Offer not waiting long to get Wrecker back in there, is he? No, nope. he'll be back in at the next dead ball. Courtney Scott also getting set to come on for Iowa. Here's Evans again. Nice cut. Sure was. And a chance for a free throw. Nice cut and nice look by Evans. And what really throws Indiana is that they love to double down on Evans, and everybody was looking at him. Nobody paying attention to Hogan, who made a perfect cut. Biggest event of the year coming up tomorrow, the Super Bowl 35. Ravens and Giants tomorrow afternoon on CBS. And then the uh, season premiere of Survivor from the Outback. That's tomorrow on CBS. A little history took place here, uh, Vern, on, not on this court, but in Iowa. University of Iowa. First college game ever played five on five was played at the University of Iowa. What year? 1896. Conference faced each other for the national championship. Indiana had three games in Michigan that year. Won all three, obviously. And uh, three outstanding. The other two were outstanding contests. That one, even though Michigan got an early lead, Indiana came back and controlled it. Shot short from Jared Jeffries. Iowa has it and a one-point lead. And Worley's sixth rebound in this game. Freshman from Iowa City West. Massachusetts. Hands Temple a defeat. Here comes Indiana. Could have, a, could have been a call on that play that time. Jeffries wasn't paying attention. Hornsby and Wrecker is there for the rebound for the Hawkeye. That's five rebounds for Luke Wrecker. Oliver away off the glass. Worley's there. And so is Kirk Haston. Well, Worley's vertical leap is about three inches. We talked about, you know, he really he doesn't get off the ground at all, but he takes up a lot of space. 
pretty good hands. Doesn't mind banging out there. But not a leaper. Now a record picked up by Hornsby. Again, Fife on the bench. Four fouls and no call there. Hastings clears it. Key now for Indiana. Get the ball in Hastings' hands as much as possible. Courtney Scott, the freshman for Lansing, Michigan. There's Hastings. Now the switch. Here's Owens. Hastings over the back. Coming next, CBS Sports coverage of the Phoenix Open presented by Xerox will continue. I that round by Mark Kalkovecchia yesterday. Tiger Woods well back. Kalkovecchia with a round of 60. That's in 6-0. When's the last time you had a uh, hole in one in a par four that bounced off somebody's putter head? Andrew, I've never had that. Huh? Andrew McGee, double eagle in a par four earlier this week. That was extraordinary. Courtney Scott, high school teammate. You think he hollered four on that one? Huh? The guys are on the green. He's, you know, they're driving the green. Instead, he hollers four. The guys holler back one. I saw the video. <laughs> he had a sheepish grin, shall we say, when he uh, it went off Tom Byron's putter on the green and went in the hole from about eight feet away. I've heard of rubber the green, but that's the all-time. 57-54. Again, Indiana has got to get the ball in Hastings' hands. Great steal by Evans. Wrecker for three. No. The tip. Yes. Courtney Scott. My, oh my. That press has given Indiana all kinds of trouble. Oliver with a steal. Got it away from Jeffries. Into the hands of Scott. I feel like Tom this is back coaching at Iowa. Steve Alford taking a page out of his book. You know, he played for Bob Knight. Bob Knight never pressed. So he picked it up somewhere. Steve Alford replacing Dr. Tom Davis, who still resides here in Iowa City. But the unpleasantness of his dismissal, such that he does not attend games. How about that? Hustle. It's a matter of wanting it more. That's all there is to it. This Iowa team could not have performed more poorly in the first half than what we saw. And they have come out with heart and spirit and give a lot of credit again to these fans that really picked their team up when they needed it. Andre Owens for three at the other end. Points coming from unlikely places, though, from Indiana. They're not back into the solid basketball. Dane Five getting ready to come back on the floor. Picked up his third and fourth fouls very early in this half. Evans wants it. Haston getting ready to go back and double him. Here's Wrecker again. Courtney Scott. Nice elevation by Scott. He wanted the foul, didn't get it. Foul is on Reggie Evans, his second. An amazing turnaround for Iowa with a 24-4 run to open this half. 22 to go. If it's true that rebounding is hustle and effort, what hustle and effort by Iowa in this half? We're out rebounded 25 to 12 in the first half and are out rebounding Indiana 22 to 7 in the second. Turn this game around completely with their full court pressure and getting on the glass and just out hustling Indiana. Fife back into the ball game, smiling down at one end of the court. No time to smile if you're wearing red. We're joined on the floor, excuse me, Billy, by Coverdale, Owens, Jeffries, and Haston. Dean Oliver picks up Tom Coverdale. See how the press has changed. Now a straight man to man, full court pressure. Oliver gets back, finds Haston, double thing. Here's Oliver. And nice five took the ball. Yeah, Oliver for three. No. It was Fife who took the charge. There was no call. Now Coverdale at the other end. Up and under. Huge play there. Coverdale with six points. The margin of difference is two. Duez, Henderson, Reggie Evans. And Haston got there. Beautiful anticipation by Haston. He saw the cut coming. And what a bad pass. Watch the no call, Billy. The reason there's no call, there's no advantage gained here. Gives the ball up. The offense nor the defense got an advantage. 
but a nice play. And by giving up the ball, Oliver did not walk, and that's what usually happens in that call. Fife on Henderson. Evans peers underneath the wrecker. He's guarded now by Andre Owens. Fife with those four fouls. Evans is going to drive. He is not going to take that shot. Now the senior point guard, Dean Oliver. Double pump. My goodness. He throws the defense with the double pump. Everybody anticipating the pass. He hasn't been hitting anything from the outside. An excellent penetration on that move. That is Dean Oliver's first basket of the day. He had been 0 for 7. Right side. Fife into Haston. That's going to be Scott pushing Haston from behind. Let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Really just alluded to that. The margin difference in the second half by this Iowa rebounding unit. 22 to 8. That, as much as anything, propelled them back into the lead they now hold. A lot of it had to do with bad shot selection by Indiana and by having Fife on the on that bench with four fouls. They didn't have their best ball handler out there. Coverdale with Evans a little late getting there, but the shot from Owens is not good. I don't understand why Indiana has gotten away from getting that ball to Haston inside. Early in this ball game, he got a lot of touches. He hasn't hardly touched it at all here in the second half. Either defensively, he went right around him. It's like a toy soldier. A little passe doble there. Under five to go. Coverdale puts it on the floor. Got it. Oh, what a dandy shot that was. You know, it's interesting. He's a guy that can put points on the board. He is not a great shooter, but he is a scorer. He figures out ways to get points on the board. Iowa by four. Steve Alford wants that ball down inside. Let Evans touch it. He's got it. He can't That's hold on to it. No, he does not have good hands. But he is He is going to fumble a ball or two. And that I would say, you know, people have compared him with the great Buck Williams. He has a lot of comparison in regard to rebounding, but he doesn't have Buck's hands. Dane Fife in the lane for two. You notice these referees have been very consistent on the charge block. They're just not calling. A lot of guys hitting the floor, and the referees are just ignoring it. You like as that? A, as a player, you've got to adjust to it. That's the way the game's being called. Make sure you go ahead and, uh, and don't try to draw charges. They're not calling. Time called by Iowa, and the clock is stopped with 3.51 to go. Hawkeyes by four. Iowa up by four with nine seconds less than four minutes to go. Bernie just passed over stats. Haston, 12 points, 13 rebounds. But just think about how few touches he has had in the last 12 minutes of this game. He spent a lot of time sitting on that bench, and he's back on the bench now at a critical time. Unless there's something wrong with him, you can't afford to have him sitting down with 3.48 to go. Now, really an interesting move. Haston sits. There is Evans again, wide open. Problems are caused when he gets it in the low post. Give it right back to him. There it is, guarded by Jeffries. Over Jeffries off the glass. And as Scott goes up, boy, what a hustler he is. Hey, I'll tell you what. Scott has got, what do you say, 245 pounds he's carrying, but he is a terrific leaper. His dad was a high school football teammate of a guy named Tony Dungy. Three and a half remaining, 67-63. And uh, Indiana, Iowa is in the bonus. If you're Mike Davis, what are you telling your kids? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell them is let's be aware of what press is going to face us on this out of bounds situation. And Haston is still sitting on that bench, 331 to go. The first thing I'd have done is told my assistant coaches, what's that kid's name? Let me get him back in the game. There's no way he can be sitting over there now. Jeffrey Newton on for Haston, and at 50. I would change their defense. They go back into the zone. Coverdale to Fife. Fife picked up by Oliver. Back outside. Owens from way outside. Now you can get.
get a better shot than that. You bring a freshman in the game. You've got your two regular backcourt players giving the ball up and the freshman waiting to shoot over the top. Not a good possession for Indiana coming out of a timeout. Fife hassling Worley. Here's the cut from record. Guarded by Andre Owens. Goes over here. 25 points for Indiana. Maybe Luke Rucker. Don't like the lineup on the floor at all for Indiana if you're going to try to come back in this one. They've gone small on the outside. Their leading scorer in this game sitting down. Boy, Evans made Coverdale realize the whistle has been blown. So you hammered him on the jump shot. Good time to get by with a free foul. And here comes Haston back in the game. Courtney Scott picks up his third, and uh, nice applause as he heads to the bench. Solid minutes. Worley and Scott came in to really turn this thing around on the boards. Now Jeffries is joined by Coverdale, Haston, Fife, and Newton for Indiana. This is the starting five in the four. Skip pass. He's got Coverdale over here on the side, but... Not ready for it. Now the double on Haston from Evans. Loose on the baseline. Very record. Out of bounds, Indiana. Boy, Newton had a wide open dunk. Record stripping. Two sixteen to go. And the, that's their last timeout because they can't get the ball inbounds. It comes with Indiana down by six. The explosive second half has given Iowa a lead at home. And uh, Steve Alford has a young team. He is a young coach, 35 years of age. Been successful at every step getting here. Tommy Amaker, Rod Barnes, Matt Doherty, Billy Donovan, Paul Hewitt doing an incredible job at Georgia Tech. Quinn Snyder at Missouri. I'll tell you, a lot of guys coming to the front. Haven't been on that head coach's seat that long, but making big impacts in college basketball. Hasten in the corner. Here's Coverdale. We near the two-minute mark. Coverdale. My gracious. Great, great shot off the screen. Fife screen. Lead is three. I let Evans touch it again on the inside. Everything good has happened when they get the ball down to Evans. They have Wrecker running around, trying to come off and rub off screens. And here he comes again. Oliver penetrates, brings it back outside. Shot clock at 12. Good decision. Now he's got to go ahead and flatten this thing out a little. 1-4, penetrate. From the corner. Nope. Rebound, Coverdale. And a chance to tie with a three. Oh, it's another drop. Vern, I think if you go back to that last possession, Iowa did not get that ball down inside, and that's what they've got to do the rest of this game. Because Wrecker doesn't have that ability to slash off the dribble, he's really set with just the jump shot. Dean Oliver, the senior point guard, accompanied by roars from the crowd as he brings it across. Look at Wrecker moving with that ball, pushing, shoving, trying to get open. Guarded by Fife, his one-time teammate again. Ball was kicked. Kicked. A fresh 35. Well, that really helps Iowa. I still think they can get it much easier than all of this movement. Just get the ball to Evans and get, then start cutting. Wrecker will inbound. Guarded by Fife. You know, I didn't know if he could go 10 minutes, so Rector's going to basically play 35 minutes again, right up on his average. There's Ryan Hogan in the backcourt. Everything is outside. They're not even looking for Evans inside. Evans is guarded by Jared Jeffries. He's almost pleading for the ball. Now he's going to set a screen. Shot clock at 15. Game clock 35. Oliver stole it from Rector. <laughs> up and under. Hogan, clean block. 28 seconds to go. Here's Jeffries. Coverdale passes on the three, drives, gets fouled. And will shoot a couple. Here's the lineup tonight on CBS. We begin with the greatest commercials from the Super Bowl. 
followed by Ricky Martin's Super Bowl Saturday night, and then MTV's Super Bowl Uncensored. That's tonight's lineup. Vern, I like Coverdale's decision here not to go for the three. He had the open lane. He's a strong, powerful guy. As I said before, he's more of a scorer than a shooter, so it was a good move. Time call. 23 seconds to go. This is Iowa. Iowa still holds uh, a three-point edge. 23 seconds to go. Coverdale going to the line. Now, what do you think Steve Alford is discussing with his guy? Well, one of the things now you have to worry about, my strategy about going to Evans, you don't want to put him on the foul line. Right. Coverdale will shoot. Big free throws here. Two of two today. That one never looked good when it left his hand. He'd almost be better off. He'd almost be better off to missing this one. Yep. Given his chance, his team a chance to rebound. Oh, you don't want to miss though and let Iowa get the rebound. And there's a foul on against Wecker. The last thing you want to do if you're Indiana. An 88 point free throw shooter. to imagine how much this game means to Luke Wecker. Well, he played at Purdue his first time back to the state of Indiana. They booed him there. Now, that's something for a Indiana guy to come back to the state and get booed on a Purdue court. But then he, he comes back playing against his old team today and he's had a sensational game. I was very impressed talking to Luke yesterday. We got talking about Bob Knight. And he was nothing but complimentary. Class in every respect. He holds Coach Knight with great esteem in terms of not only having an opportunity to play for him, but what he felt about him and, his, and, and what he meant to the history of basketball in Indiana. But today he's making history in the state of Iowa. Seven points in 36 minutes on a bum leg. Five down, you don't have to get a three, but you got to get some points on the board quickly. Good job by Oliver to force them to take some time getting it inbounds. Coverdale brings it up, gets a screen from Fife. Boy, you can't take time holding the ball. You got to get shots up. Fife for three off the front edge. Chase down, saved by Luke Rucker. He's going to hang on to it till he gets fouled. Might want to take this one home. Smart play by Rucker. As great as he played, and this tremendous heart this Iowa team put in it, to me, the key to this basketball game today were the Iowa fans. Their team was playing horrible, and they stuck with them. Tremendous thing to watch, fans stick with the team. So easy to bail out, you know it? Yeah. <laughs> That's rare. He's missed three today. Off the glass. It's over. A remarkable comeback for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They were down 17 at the break. They come back and outscore Indiana 45-23 to win it. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Kirk Haston from Indiana, Luke Recker from Iowa. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. What an afternoon for Luke Recker and the Iowa Hawkeyes. For Billy Packer, I'm Vern Lundquist. Stay tuned next for PGA Golf, the Phoenix Open. This is a presentation of CBS Sports. Um, not to me. I mean, he was a good player in Indiana. He, he, he led us in scoring his last year there. He scored a lot of... Uh, 
He's always gotten to the free throw line. Uh, I think now he's shooting the three-point shot a lot better than he did at Indiana. And, and, and that's scary because he's real good going to the basket and drawing fouls. And he's probably the best guy in college basketball uh, working off screens and, and, and making you foul him. I mean, he had our guys playing so timid at one point that, you know, we just let him catch the ball because we didn't want to have a foul called on us. But uh, he was doing a really good job. One more question. Our side of our locker room is not open, but our players will be available in the in the cement hallway. If you can stay off the carpet because they use it as a walkway, it just gets too long in there. So our guys will be available right outside of it in the cement. Right now, or right now, just as uh, yeah, they walk out to the bus. I think that it's neither team is an experienced team. Both teams are learning. Uh, I think you got two teams that uh, are pretty good right now with uh, the future looking real good. Uh, I, I really like their young kids, and I really like our young kids. So I think it's just two teams that, you know, trying to find themselves. You know, in the first half, we get down, I think, 06 or 08, whatever it was. Again, I'm sure our young guys are thinking Michigan. Uh, in the second half, we make a huge run on them after being up 17. They're up 17, and we cut a 17-point lead to nothing. It ended up being tied, I think, six or seven minutes into the half. They're thinking Minnesota. Uh, so I think it's your teams have to get away from that. You've got to be able to look past the negatives of what happened, learn from it, uh, and get better. And fortunately enough, we were a little bit better in the second half than what they were in the first half. And, uh, but I think it's two teams really trying to find themselves and learn this game. You see a record that he could just take again, just because of the run that we were on. You're down 17. You make that kind of run. Uh, you kind of worry about substitutions. But I thought he and Hogan really kept us afloat in the first half. If it's not for those two, uh, we could be down 25 at, at halftime. And then I thought in the second half, Glenn Worley and Courtney Scott uh, really came up big for us. You know, that's been Glenn one of his better rebounding nights. I thought he was very aggressive, and Courtney gave us that spark that he can give us, and uh, I thought he brought that to us in the second half. And the team making a comeback like that? We did that. It's, it's an, an awkward question, but I think you might understand why we had to ask it today. If Indiana calls you at the end of the season, what? what why, you, why, I've been doing this 12 minutes. Why do you think that you have to ask that today? Because you're playing Indiana. Well, so what? You're going to ask that to me, Minnesota, on Wednesday? Come back. I'll tell you what, I'll make a promise to you. You come back on Wednesday when I'm playing in Minnesota, and if something happens to Dan, you ask me that same question, and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Coach, Any right other there, questions? Was this uh, an exceptionally good learning experience? What did you miss? Three free throws? Yes, yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay. Go ahead, question. One for one. <laughs> Luke, given your history, coaches, where Brody's from, how special was this win over here? This is a very special win for me. Um, you know, I took a lot of heat, a lot of criticism when I decided to leave Indiana University. Uh, and that hurt, I'm not going to lie, it hurt really bad. Um, my family lives there, my friends live there, it's my home state. And if we would have lost this one today, I don't think I would have been able to show my face in that state again because I would have been very embarrassed. But uh, that's why it feels good. It feels good. You know, I'm not trying to rub it in anybody's face. I just want to go out there and play the best I can. And uh, I thought I could have played a little bit better. But uh, the important thing is we got the win. And, um, you know, it gives me some satisfaction. But we got a long way to go. I'm not going to be satisfied until this team's uh, where I want it to be. Look over the first maybe five, six minutes. Where you go? I thought I, I thought I moved better today. Uh, my guys did an ex the guys on the team did an excellent job of getting me open. I can't say enough about Reggie, Courtney Scott, Glenn, Duez. Uh, they do a great job of screening for me. And Dean and, and Hogan and Brody always have the ball in the right spot for me. So, uh, yeah, I think I moved better today individually. But as a team, we screened a lot better. Uh, the ball was in the proper position. It's a team effort. Uh, and I'm very proud of my teammates today because they did a terrific job. Well, could you have a better?